the all-star app, the number one app in the business, UFC, Bellator, One Championship, PFL, and more. Get the app right now. Link in description. Let's get into it right away, Joe. Um, first thing is, almost four years with no fights. You came back in, I believe, in Kazakhstan, and of, of all places, Niza FC 41, got the second round submission victory in July. How was that whole experience, man? Uh, it was great. You know, it was one of those things that it's, you know, I'm, I'm clearly one of the uh, elder statesmen when it comes to guys fighting. I mean, we even knew in 2019 when I tried out for the team, I was more or less everybody's uh, grandfather at that point. So most people hadn't even started doing MMA when I had turned pro. So it was kind of, uh, you know, something we always kind of knew. But, you know, we really wanted to, to get back in there. So, you know, it was a little rough with COVID. You know, fights were falling out. And then even taking the job here at Tiger, I ended up having to turn down a few fights only because we weren't fully staffed at the time. We were still, you know, trying to find the, getting the right people in and, uh, you know, just couldn't find it, couldn't find the time. And then when high season hits, you know, one thing I learned working with Mark Munoz, it's very difficult to coach and fight at the same time. You know, uh, all props to James Krause for doing it for as long as he did it. Um, but you just find if you're really putting your focus into your fighters or, the, you know, anybody that's at the gym that you're trying to help, you just don't have the time and your body. I mean, it's just so hard to keep your body in the right place. You know, I, I still, even now, like, I took that fight in July on three weeks' notice. Uh, and I was still trying. I mean, I was training with all the boys. My weight was super low because I was teaching, you know, two to three classes a day, working with three or four fighters a day. I wasn't really getting my own training in. It was really just, you know, helping out who I can. And we've had a couple of, especially the bigger guys that have come through the gym lately. Um, so I was, you know, still rolling, still doing all those things. But... You know, it wasn't like a proper fight camp. Uh, so it was interesting. Yeah, I didn't feel very much pressure. It was one of those things. Just like, all right, well, let's go have some fun. So <laughs> did that. Yeah, yeah, good day, definitely. Uh, so moving forward, are you still going to fight, or do you feel like you're gonna? that's going to take a more of a backseat? Oh, it's totally going to take a backseat. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I love it. I love fighting. Um, I love competing. Um, you know, one of the perks of doing jiu-jitsu is you can basically do that till the day you die. Um, or until your body just stops fighting on the other hand at some point you know your opponents are going to tell you you no longer need to be in there um, and you know you can argue you know my, my last couple in Russia were a little rough uh, but now you know the one in Kazakhstan you know fighting on the Chuck and Tito card I still feel good I'd still like to fight but at the same time I, I feel like I have a responsibility to the to the people in the gym and the fighters that are putting in that that work uh, to kind of help them get where they need to go. So uh, if I do fight again, it'll be in the summer during low season, you know, when there's not a, not a lot happening, nobody has any fights, good. You know, I don't want to I don't want to not work with somebody because I have a fight. Um, I'd like to still help them with that. So, you know, if it all lines up and, and everything happens again and the opponents are, you know, well matched or, you know, I didn't think this one was well matched, but I was a I was a, like a plus six hundred underdog when the fight started, uh, which blew my mind. I was like, okay, well, if that's what we're doing, so uh, everybody else thought it was fairly matched, or at least I was supposed to lose. So, uh, you know, everything comes into play that way. So the the biggest thing that hurt me this time was breaking my hand in the fight. Um, I didn't. That's another thing that weighs heavy on your mind you know it's one thing to fight but if i you know i broke my hand and it basically took me out of holding mitts rolling with anybody super hard to teach you know i had to really rely on a lot of uh a lot of close fighters and friends to help me teach with classes because you know i was running around with the one hand that couldn't do basically much so um that hurt more than anything else you know what i mean it was great to get a win it was it was great but you could even even see on my face after the fight you know I, I, I pat the guy on the back and I'm literally just sitting there like, I just ruined the next, you know, six to eight weeks by breaking my hand. So, um, you know, it, it becomes more than just the fight when you when you get injured. So, um, yeah. So hopefully, you know, once a year and depending on if the body's healthy and, you know, yeah, 
we'll still do it. Yeah, yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good. You know, investing in in your fighter. I've been seeing that lately. You know, through social media, you going out to Kazakhstan and and you know with uh, Tiger Muay Thai. I seen that they're expanding the class. We talked about a little, little bit about this before we started the interview. You know, what changes have you guys made? You, you know, coaches are coming in. Who are the coaches? Uh, so can't necessarily give names yet because they haven't signed on the dotted line. Um, I think we've done that in the past. And that didn't turn out too well in terms of everything coming together. So I'll keep that one a little bit close knit to the chest. But um, yeah, we're bringing in at least one more guy, hopefully two. Um, the big changes we made to the schedule was really separating the uh, the professionals and the amateurs. Um, it's been, uh, you know, with COVID and everything, everything was, was so much slower, even during high season. And, and to be honest, only being me, there's only so many classes I can teach in a day without burning myself out and not being able to work with anybody. Um, and it was getting to be that point, and I couldn't justify opening up a second class for amateurs and pros and teach jujitsu and do, you know, it was just, uh, it was getting a little too much. So, uh, but now we've got uh, Alexi here teaching jujitsu. It's beautiful. It leaves my mornings open uh, to kind of work with fighters or anybody that wants to go in. And like I said, the, the big change was the, the separation of the amateur and the professional classes. Now, one thing that we have done is we tried to create a amateur culture that's very similar to the professional sessions. Um, so, so our pro sessions are now more sparring based, uh, drilling based. There's not as much quote unquote learning uh, time. You know, we'll have 10, 15 minutes, we'll show a technique, we'll work a technique, but it's more like, let's get our rounds in. You know, we, we want the people around that are gonna push us, you know, for the most part, when you've hit that professional level, you know what you need to get better at. You know what you need to build your individual skills at. And you know when you need it's time to test it. So we wanted to provide that professional timing for everybody to really come in and test their skills. Um, our amateur sessions, though, are very much skill-based. Um, I put a lot of time into designing how we want to flow our weeks, really helping the amateurs understand how to kind of put everything together. And for anybody that's interested in doing MMA as a – that sounds interesting. You're like, okay, good. You know, I can't put you in a class with professionals if you've never done anything and you just think MMA sounds nice. Um, that being said, an amateur class for somebody like that is something that can still, you know, provide them some benefit without necessarily dragging anybody away from their goals. Um, so, yeah, really just trying to, to implement that and, you know, get that going um, is kind of the big push. Pardon the uh, one championship fighters. Uh, they just kind of do what they want. You know, <laughs> when you knock out the number three uh, fighter in the division, you just kind of get what you want at that exactly, point. Exactly, so. exactly. Hey, speaking of uh, fighters, man, like him, like who have you been working with closely? I'm pretty sure you've been working with him. Yeah, he had a credible performance the other, the other night. It's, Jesus. Oh, uh, you know, it's we've just got a, a great crew here right now. You know, whether it's Iliad, whether it's Artem, who's got fights coming up. Um, I mean... There's about, I think we have six guys up on the, coming up on the card on the 21st of October. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just been one of those things where we're working with those guys. And everybody, it's interesting. Everybody, like I said, kind of once you hit that pro level, everybody knows what they need to work on. They try to really provide a space for people, you know, and say, what do you need? What can we help you with? You know, and more or less try to get people with the right people. So whether it's working with Matthew Semper on their striking, Alexi with more, more or escapes, you know, it's not so much individuals working with anybody. It's it's really trying to put people with the right people uh, at this point. So, you know, a lot of those guys, I mean, watching Ilya strike is a beautiful thing. Uh, you know what I mean? So So being able to watch him work and being able to, you know, just kind of feed off them, see what they need, see what we can help get everybody in the right place. Um, it's seeming like a, a winning formula at the moment. Um, so we're just going to keep it rolling and, uh, and doing what we're doing with that. Definitely a, a very cohesive, you know, group coming together rather than like, you know, one individual. Because you, pretty much you were doing a lot of the stuff by yourself for a long time, right? Like just try to put yeah. pieces together. Uh, 
it was it was getting too much it was getting too much and i don't think everybody was getting what they needed out of it you know what i mean i was stretched too thin wasn't giving people enough time or wasn't giving people what they really needed um so like i said bringing in the bringing in the coaches has been the biggest thing um and that's to me what's really going to free up the time to really allow us to start getting deeper with the fighters that we need to and finding you know finding out how best to help everybody um, as we move forward. So, yeah, really excited about it. Yeah, 2023 is going to probably be one of those, uh, you know, the glory days, you know, of, of before the pandemic, right? I feel like 2023 is going to be the year where you guys kind of get back on track and start putting out champions and, and these big, big fights. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and that's, I agree. You know, that's where we're finding, especially with Tiger right now, we're finding a lot of our fighters are one championship fighters, uh, you know, we're finding we still have the UFC guys that, that make their way in, but it's more the homegrown guys, the guys that haven't really hit yet. Now they're starting to hit with one championship. Uh, you know, 10K won the, the title recently. Ilya just smashed in his last fight. We've got Artem making his one championship debut. I mean, we have a lot of guys that are really, you know, going through you. You know, Anatoly, who's always uh, going to smash. Uh, you know, so it's... Uh, it's interesting to see how it's starting to expand, and especially giving us that presence in one. It's, uh, it's been a it's been a fun uh, a fun thing to get going. 